If you need to update your deck, go to 50cards.shop. Get 5% off your next purchase when you use code NEXUS. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to another deck profile. And today, I am really excited to bring you my fourth place Springfest San Gabriel Team League deck profile featuring none other than my very own homebrewed Gold Paladin deck. So I'm actually really excited to go ahead and talk about this. We ended up in fourth place because of some little whoopsie doopsie misplays from me and the boys but you know what we still made it really far and the fact that we made it back past deck check alone was enough excitement as it was for us so really excited for that so without further ado we're just gonna go ahead and jump right into the deck profile uh starting with our main deck our starter my uh, very trusty sp knight of early dawn coel uh does what every other v starter does gives you a quick shield if you're going second basically into our grade threes, this is a Gurgit deck, so we got our four copies of Sunrise Rain at Gurgit. So Gurgit is the ace of our deck. We want to be riding him so that we can uh, do our plays. So he gives 5k to units called by abilities for every marker you have. He also gets that 5k himself. He also has the ability when he attacks, you can look at top five, call two things. Uh, it also works defensively. You can call two things from the top five of the Guardian Circle. So it's an offensive and defensive deck, which is actually really helpful in premium. Um, so there's that. That's the main focus. That's the main dude of the deck. And we also get to run my other dude, my man, the one, the only, Bluish Flame Liberator Percival. So Percival is only legal in premium uh, because he is quite literally broken. <laughs> Uh, his skill is basically to give you another Excel marker when you play him for a Counter Blast. You Counter Blast 1, discard 1, get an Excel marker, search your deck or drop some for Aggro Veil and call it. So the fact that Gurgit thrives off Excel markers and Percival gives you Excel markers, um, they just go hand in hand. I only ran 3 because I was playing around with the ratios and I thought, why not just play with 3? I would like to say that I wish I ran 4. <laughs> card is too good, so if you can, run for Percival, but this is what I ran for the list. Lastly, for Great Threes, I did run the two mock slash. This thing is just so good. To quote Miles during our games in Team Link, he said, anytime I saw mock slash on your field, I felt safe because I knew you were going to win that turn. So mock slash just uh, lets you extend your attack, so it lets you call a card from your hand, but that unit is getting all those po that power from Gurgit's ability. And yes, to answer your question, sometimes you do not stride in this deck. You just go with the Gurgit go ham, go face uh, ability, and it works. So that's what got us to fourth. That's it for the uh, the main deck, normal unit grade threes. We can get into the trigger ones later, but for now, let's dive into grade twos. Starting with our three copies of Aggro Veil. Uh, Aggro Veil is when you ride it, you can look at top three to call something, or when it swings and it's on rear, you can suck up a rear guard to soul, it gets 10k, and at the end of battle, it goes back to your hand. I'm only running three just because it is recyclable. You can call it from the drop with Percival. You know, there's a really good, consistent way to see it, so I just kind of stuck with the three, and it's been working for me, honestly. Uh, if you want to update to four, go for it. Nothing wrong with that. Speaking of cards you might want up to four, uh, I ran three copies of Wonder Rezzle, uh, simply just for the second skill, which is when it's placed, you can call a card from your hand. That triggers Gurgit's ability when things are called by card ability. It also helps you extend attacks with Mox Slash Dragon. This is like, these two are like the scary combo right here. These two are what honestly make the deck. What makes the deck in V as well. Uh, I ran three, just, you know, space issues, but if you want to run four, go for it. Nothing wrong with that. Next up for grade twos, I actually got a lot of really positive comments about running this card, which is Knight of Excision Dioring. <laughs> Dioring, if that's how it's supposed to be pronounced. So this card is really, really neat in premium because it's a D card from DBT08. What it does is when it's placed, if your Vanguard has one clan, you can Soul Blast one, discard a card from your hand, choose a card with the same clan and only clan as your Vanguard from your drop zone and add it to your hand. Yes, you can grab any card from your drop zone and put it right back into your hand. So Heal Guardians, PGs, Percivals, Mox Slash Dragon, anything you need for that turn that is just sitting in your drop zone, you can get it back. And this card actually came in pretty clutch and a lot of people at the end of my games were coming up to me and asking me to read this. The judges were reading it <laughs> during the top eight and they were just kind of like, that's a really silly card. Uh, wonder why people aren't running it. So uh, hopefully this card gets a little bit more attention. It's literally nine cents. <laughs> I'm running one Paramore. Paramore's an alternate ride if you want to ride a grade two. It's act, Kennebus one, 
call a great two or less, then draw a card. So you can, you know, call Dindrain or Berengaria to get, to get a counter charge out of it. Second skills when it's placed onto Rear or Guardian Circle by a card ability, it gets five shield and five power. So it's just to kind of help you, like, you know, play some units and get some power. And it's searchable with Jeffrey, but we'll get into that later. We got more one ofs. So I'll put my one ofs down here. We got our Arthen. Arthen is also a D-Series card. This is just my anti-eradicator impede card. It's when it's in the front row of your units with different card names, then this unit cannot be chosen. So if you swing with this first and it doesn't die, uh, the rest of your board is safe from impede, which is really, really good. You usually call this out during the Ultima turns or, you know, if I'm playing against certain matchups and I know they have a defensive G-Guard that disrupts my board, uh, I'll try and see if I can pull out the Arthen if I can. Lastly, we got our one Berengaria, which is a Dindrain clone, basically. It's when it's placed by a card ability. You can either Counter Blast to Soul Charge, which you'll never do, or you can Soul Blast to Counter Charge, which you will always do. But it's another way to Counter Charge, which the deck kind of desperately needs, but there's a really weird give and take with the Soul Blasting. I'm still working out the kinks, but uh, the deck uh, performed as well as it possibly could, and I am very satisfied. Almost forgot, or actually there's one more grade two I almost forgot. It's our order. I ran one of this um, just to kind of try it out because it seemed to make sense. It's uh, from also from set eight. It's you play it with counter blast one, draw two cards, then choose two cards from your hand and call them. And if you don't call them, you have to discard, but you're pretty much always gonna call them. They have to be the same grade as your Vanguard or less. And this is technically being called by a card ability. So the idea for this was to use this to proc it off with Gurgit's ability. I like the idea. I just don't like how it costs a counter blast. So I really found myself often discarding this and uh, it would just sit in my hand sometimes. So I mean, it went off maybe one time in one of my games and it helped a little bit just to kind of draw some cards early. Like if I'm on grade two and I play this just to kind of build a board, that's where this definitely shines more but consistency wise maybe if i can find a better way to get more tenor charge i might run more of it as of right now i'm probably going to cut it for percival so that's probably what i'm going to end up doing then we're going into grade one starting off with our four copies of jeffrey why four copies of jeffrey because i really 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 want to ride gurgit so what jeffrey does when it's placed on ban you look at top seven and search for a Gurgit or a Paramore and add it to your hand. I did sometimes whiff, but that's perfectly fine. These searches whiff every now and then. There's nothing wrong with that. Second skills when it's placed on the Guardian Circle or Rear Guard Circle by a card ability, you can get five power and five shield. So that makes it a 15k shield when it's called by a G Guardian, which is nice. And also getting 5k power when it's called doesn't hurt either. So it's still a really good overall balanced card. Most importantly, it's that when I see it in my opening hand, I want to ride it because I really want the Gurgit, and if I don't get the Gurgit, maybe I'll get the Paramore just to kind of keep the ride consistency. So that is why I chose to go with the Jeffries. Now we're going on to our other grade ones, which is our four Gorbaducks. So kind of the same premise. We just really want to see Gurgit or any of our grade threes. So it's when it's placed from hand, you can look at top five, add a grade three. If you added a grade three, you have to discard one. Um, so this also adds your heal guardians for, you know, heal guarding, which is cool. And you only need to call two or more units to get that extra 5k. So it's really easy to get off. And lastly, very simple grade one lineup. We're just going 444 is our Dindrains. So Dindrains when it's placed by card ability, you soul last one to draw, or you can kind of charge and get 3k instead. Both are really good. I found myself using both throughout the event and I liked it. So I would just like to say real quick that if you are not a fan of Jeffrey, which is completely understandable, you can run Josephus instead. Nothing wrong with that. I just stuck with the Jeffrey because I really wanted to make sure I saw my Gurgits if I could, because the deck kind of shuts, not really shuts down, but doesn't do much if you're not on Gurgit. That's why I ran the Jeffreys. So that is it for our grade ones. We're now hitting into triggers. I'm gonna speed this up a little bit. Pretty typical trigger lineup. It's our four Ill Guardians. Uh, we are doing the four draw PGs. I am not running the Elementarias because um, we have G guards that call cards from the deck to the guard circle. Last thing I wanna do is call an order when I can get a PG instead. So that is why I'm running the four draw PGs. I only barely decked out once. So I don't think the draws are that much of an issue. And then we got four of each of our skill crits. So this one lets you perform stride and the other one is it moves to soul and gives your Vanguard 10K for the battle. This card is probably more of the MVP than this one. So if you wanted to cut 
one for the over trigger. Honestly, cut this one. This the sole is just too important. Um, but at the end of the day, it's up to you. So that is it for the triggers. We are not running the over trigger due to the Ultima choice restriction. So big old spoiler on that. So let's just go ahead and jump right into the G zone. Starting off with R, one copy of Ultima. Uh, we are running Ultima just because it is a decent finisher. I will be honest, I don't think I went into this once the entire day. I just didn't really have the setup for it or I didn't have the copy of Gurgen in my hand for the cost. Kind of unfortunate, these things happen. But the idea was that I didn't want to rely on the over trigger as a way to win when I could just go into Ultima and force my entire my opponent to kind of guard multiple attacks with a bunch of crits on it. If you want to run the over trigger, go for it. Not that big of a deal. This isn't Holy Shine where you have to run Ultima in order for the deck to perform well. Uh, Gurgit does fine on its own. So yeah, you can try it out with the over trigger. Then I'm running one copy of Invarious. Invarious actually won me one of my games, surprisingly. Lets you call cards from your hand um, when it attacks. Uh, you put all your rested units to the bottom of your deck. If you put four rested units, you can restand this at the end of its battle. Uh, the only thing I really don't like about this card is you have to have the right setup. And um, I did make a little oopsie daisy by going into this without the setup. And that kind of cost me the game there because I can't read. <laughs> um, so yeah, this is a really good card as a finisher. Uh, it's not really my favorite mid-game card, but uh, it, you know, it does have its moments. So I run it at one. Going into the next MVP of the deck, this is the anti ride down meta card. It's Spear Cross Dragon. It's still goaded since the minute it came out. Act, G Zone. If your Vanguard is currently grade 3, you can counter boss 2. Discard a card from your hand and stride this. Regardless what your opponent's grade is, you can stride into this. So if your opponent does the little ride down thing with Steam Maidens, just stride anyway. Second skill is act. You can solve last one, flip anything face up, top five, call two, shuffle your deck, just get a board. It kind of made my opponent not want to ride down because they thought you're just going to stride anyway so it doesn't really matter if I ride down or not. So that was interesting. So a lot of my ride down matchups in Springfest, uh, I didn't have to worry about that. So Spear Cross is still really, really good when your opponent gives you the counter blast for it. On to the next really, really good G unit is two copies of Brand Man Dragon. Um, basically, when in doubt, if you don't know what to stride into, this is pretty much what you have to stride into. It's when it attacks, flip anything face up, put two of your rear guards to the bottom of your deck, draw two, then call up to two. If you called two from your hand, it gets a crit. So this is kind of what helps you catch up, but the skill itself is kind of whatever. But it's really great against the Gridora matchup. So if your opponent says you can only call from hand, Brand Bend Dragon says that's fine, that's what I was gonna do anyways. We run two copies of Flip Botter. I, I shouldn't say it like that. <laughs> it's Gary to Helios. Gary Helios, uh, what he does is if you're in Unite, you can flip a copy of itself face up to get quad drive. Second skill is this gets 5k for each your rear guards, and your opponent cannot guard a grade one or greater cards in their hand. So if you're playing against Luard, or I don't know, our Grand Blue player is still running grade one PGs, I don't know. Steam Maidens, I don't really risk it because sometimes Steam Maiden players play Arlems, sometimes they just do draw PGs. I didn't risk it, but the idea here is that if you know you're playing against a deck that runs grade one PGs and you really have no other option, you can go into this for quad drive, but it's mostly flip fodder, I'm gonna be real. <laughs> then I'm running two copies of Glorious Raining. Uh, I'm planning on switching this out for Campbell when we get History Collection, but for now, what, uh, Glorious Raining is, is just for if you're in a situation where you need to make multiple attacks and you're really running out of deck and you really need to find a way to triple drive, you can at least put cards back into your deck, call something, still have the triple drive, and be able to kind of finish off your opponent that way if that's how you want to play the game. Overall, every time I feel like I use this card, I end up decking out by the end of the game just from the sheer amount of calling and soul charging. I would just like to say be careful when you're going into this card and I would say don't really go into it unless you have some crazy bananas plan while your opponent's at five damage and Invarious is just not the best option in that case. Now we're getting into our G Guardians. Two Slimy Flare, classic. It's just put a rear guard to bottom of the deck, look at top five, call two things at different grades. Um, this is one of the cards that can pull a PG out of your deck, which is nice. So 
Summy Flare helps with that. And also if you call it a Jeffrey or a Paramore, those get 5k shield when they're called. So easy way to build up really, really easy shield. I feel like anytime my opponent attacks me, doesn't matter what the number is, my brain just goes, ah, eh, just use Slay Me Flare, you'll probably see a PG. And nine out of 10 times I do. Uh, this is my favorite G guard to go into. People keep telling me I do it too much and it's what causes me to deck out. And I tell them they're right, but it's what wins me games anyways. So Sanctified Dragon, what it does is you can Soul Blast one, look, call the top two cards of your deck to the guard. And if you have a grade one or, or greater card among them, you can draw a card afterwards. So yes, that is three cards out of your deck, but I can't tell you how many times that I used this Soul Blast, drew, and I drew into another heal trigger to G Guard again. I don't know why, it just happens. I'm just that lucky. One copy of Elise. Uh, Elise is just flip fodder because, you know, you want to get into Ultima if you can. So that's a thing. And then the last thing is just your Dismal. Dismal. Honestly, now everyone should run Dismal if you're playing a Gold Paladin deck and you're running Mock Slash because my opponent poked in my Mock Slash once. They were playing Aqua Force and they're using Gimbled and I was like, they're gonna retire it anyways. I might as well just dismal it, keep it on the board, can't touch it, and then the Mock Slash the next turn is what won me the game. Dismal, for sure goaded in the Gold Paladin deck. And that's pretty much it for the deck profile. So thank you guys for watching. Um, I had a lot of fun at Spring Fest. Shout out to Miles and Hal for playing as hard as they did and getting us all the way up to fourth place. It was a brand new experience for us. Um, being casual players that kind of just focused on playing the game for fun, being able to just kind of play as hard as we could and do some really funny plays against our opponents with some really fun, wacky decks, except for Miles. He was just playing meta. <laughs> That's pretty much it. Thank you for watching. And here's to more fun decks in future events. Bye.